What's up guys, it's your boy, Barca Boy 103 Today I'm going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. A lot of stuff to cover, a lot of juicy stuff too, so let's get into it. So we're going to start off with a cover from Mundo Deportivo last night saying not for 111 million euros. It goes on to say that Barcelona will not play the title's release clause. It's illogical in the current circumstances. The club will, RTE in process, prefer to offer Inter players plus money. So this is obviously common sense through the coronavirus. Not that much money coming in because Barcelona, on average, make twenty twenty five millions every every match day. So since that's not coming in, they got no money. It's looking like players plus cash, but I'd rather give player plus cash for Neymar. Like I keep saying this over. It looks like based on the news, it looks like Barcelona would prefer Lautaro. Like everyone in the board wants Lautaro except for one guy, Bartomeu. Bartomeu wants Neymar. So it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to see it's gonna be you know hard to do both transfers. There's a lot of talk that both are gonna happen plus more, which I can't believe. Also says here that Neto is on the market and Inaki Pena could be promoted. Now that is a great move from Barcelona. Selling Neto while he still has value, thirty million, get any twenty five, thirty million for him. Promote Inaki Pena, he's obviously a talented keeper was in that. 2017-18 youth squad that won the Champions League. So I have no problem with that. Because, you know, Neto only played three games. Copa del Rey. Thing is, in the Copa del Rey, he got injured, so he missed a lot of games. So I think he only played two, three games for Barcelona. We're paying him 100k a week, and he's worth 30 million. That's a great sale right there. Can go to Neymar and Lutado. So I hope that happens, but other than that, I don't see Barcelona activating the release clause anyways, so let's see where where we go from here. So next, we're going to look at the cover from Sport last night saying they can play together. It goes on to say that the dressing room and the coaching staff see a forward line possible with Neymar and Messi behind Lautaro and Luis Suarez ahead. Barcelona are still determined to achieve the signing of the Brazilian star and the young Argentinian goal store next summer. So obviously, it looks like Barcelona are considering a 4 triple two. With uh, probably the young Busquets behind, Messi and Neymar ahead of them, and then Lotaro and Suarez up front. Um, that's way too attacking, in my opinion. I don't know how Kike said he uh play. You play his system in that formation. Man, I still don't see how either of the, both these one of them can be done hundred percent. I don't see how both of them can be done. Plus, we need, you know, a midfielder because Rakic and Vidal may be leaving. Rakic is 100%, obviously. Vidal may be leaving. So, if they both leave, we'll need to sign a midfielder. If not, we can just rely on Alinea and Ricky Push. Don't mind, don't mind that. But, I, like, one reliable source says only one can happen. One saying both. So, it's kind of hard for a Barca fan to, you know, you know, pick a side. But, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens, I guess. So next, I'm going to call this the Lotaro Martinez section, where we have three articles. We're going to talk about each one, all about Lotaro Martinez. First one coming in from Sport, saying Barcelona want to finalize the deal for Lotaro Martinez as soon as possible and in our advanced negotiations with both Inter and the player. The Italian outfit are looking forward for looking for the replacement. I think the replacement that has been linked with them is Giroud and someone else I can't remember, but... The thing is about sport is that they're like they're kind of not reliable. Also, Fabrizio Romano came out and said that there has been no contact between Inter and Barcelona whatsoever, and he's very reliable. So I don't know what sport we're talking about here. Uh, Marca have come out and said that Tara Martinez had told Barcelona he wants to join the club and that Argentina is willing to force his departure. Now, if that's true, that could be a big factor. Obviously, if you usually pay when they push a move, the the team are usually willing to you know sell even more especially when they go public like with Griezmann and everyone else who went public so that could be a good in Barcelona's favor so we'll see what happens with that finally from Mundo Deportivo saying Barcelona aren't planning to pay the Tara Martinez release clause and we'll try to seal the deal by offering players plus money the players that are linked are Vidal, Artur but in brackets Barcelona have no intention including him thank God Alinea and Cucurella Cucurella now, again, the interesting thing that I've noticed is that they included Cucurella. So, which means that if um, Getafe buy him, we're obviously going to buy him back right away, I guess. So, for me, I, um, 
I could see maybe Fearpo being included and then keeping Cucurella. But it's like, it's whatever Barcelona prefer to sell and whatever Inter want to get. So a lot of complications to this deal. And we got to do this all again with Neymar. So I don't know how both are going to happen, but we'll see. So this next one's coming in from Estadio Deportivo saying Real Betis have pro Barcelona for the possible signings of the two youngsters, Pedri and Ricky Puch. So for me, you don't want to rush your decision too early. Keep the offers on the table. Let's see preseason. Let's see what happens. Let's see what Kiki Setien wants to decide. All comes down to the manager here. No, the board should not have a decision in this unless, I don't know, they just want to be pricks and just not listen to Kiki Setien. But no loans till after preseason, although it may be likely that they both go out on loan, plus maybe Collado and Arejo. So we'll see what happens with that. So this next one's coming in from the Deportivo saying Barcelona have a left back in mind who can compete with Alba in case Firpo will depart this summer. His name is Tagliafico from Ajax. Barcelona have spoken to the representatives on several occasions now. The Argentina is keen to on a move to Catalonia. This guy's gonna cost like 40, 50 million. I don't know why. <laughs> Man, I, th I feel like a lot of these stories are just there to cover the paper because like a lot of this is not making sense. Like why would we offload a young promising left back who's young for 20 million then buy his replacement for nearly double the price who's in his, who's 27 years old and is in like the latter stage of his career like it doesn't make sense i don't i doubt this is gonna happen i feel like that will probably go to the premier league him and onana because i think they're great talents and i think it's time for them to move on from ajax but yeah we'll see what happens so this next one's coming in from ESPN saying Barcelona only considered three players in the squad as untransferable. Messi, Thorstegen, and Frankie de Jong. Uh, big statement. Obviously, the three were in the uh, at the awards this year were the only three Barcelona represents, representatives. Obviously, like our older veterans like Pique, Alba, Busquets, no offers were really coming for them. That's why they're considered, you know, transferable. Like if someone comes in with a fifty offer, fifty million offer for Pique, then obviously everyone would take it. But I feel like Arthur should be added to that list. To be honest, who else should be added to that list? Yeah, I think Arthur. This Arthur should be added to the non-transferable list either too. But yeah, hopefully we can get uh, Ter Stegen and Messi on a long-term contract soon. Well, probably not Messi, but Ter Stegen because Messi's gonna have that every year activation like Iniesta did so he can choose when he wants to retire which is fair enough so yeah let's see what happens so this next one's coming in from uh, GDS saying should Barcelona want to sign Lazio defender Luis Felipe the club would have to pay around 40 million euros so for me I think he's a great option but for now I would hold out just to see what would happen with our defenses this summer obviously Umtiti's probably on the market I don't know why but the Debo's on the market Probably a little sin for offers for long live. Something, you know, miraculously comes in like an 80 million offer. So I'd slow I'd hold, hold down on it. Depends on if we include any of them in the Lotaro and Neymar operations too. So, but I think he's a great option. So we'll see what happens. So the big story in the past 24 hours is coming from Cat Radio, who are very reliable, saying Barcelona have ruled out the signing of Neymar Jr. this summer from PSG due to the economic consequences of the coronavirus. I'm so disappointed, man. I really want to name more this summer. Hopefully, this is not completely true because obviously the next, like an hour later, MD and Sport had Neymar on the cover saying he's coming. So let's hold out. Let's not, you know, get ahead of ourselves. This is only coming in from one source. Usually when it comes in from multiple sources, it's true. So we got one source in. Hopefully we don't get any more. But like I said from before, Neymar ahead of Altara Martinez for sure. Like, I just want to see MSN just one more time. Just one more time, please. So this next one is coming in from Mundo Deportivo saying, uh, board member Javier Bordas has a dream, bringing Thiago Alcantara back to the club. Bordas considered Thiago as a perfect midfielder, and the player's contract expires in 2021. I'm a little bit iffy about this one. I'd much rather bring in Fabian Ruiz. Obviously, Thiago, I think he's a world-class midfielder. Um... If we can get him for free, maybe next year, I'll take it, obviously. 
But I feel like the ship has sailed for Thiago. We should have got him maybe two summers ago when he, we were really linked with him. I can see why he wants to bring him in, but I think the ship has sailed. Obviously, he's 29 years old now, pushing 30. He's in, like, the latter stage of his career as well. You don't want to bring in any, you know, 29 pluses back. We need to bring in uh, youth. Not really youth, but, you know, younger players with potential. So I don't really see this one happening, but uh, we'll see what happens, I guess. So the final story of today is coming in from Ken that's there saying Juan Laporta could run for presidency elections in 2021. For me, obviously, Laporta is one of the best presidents to ever be president of Barcelona. Sextuple, two Champions Leagues, appointed Pep Guardiola, you know, funded the La Masia that produced so much talent. For me, if he runs, he'll probably win just based on his history, but... We'll see what happens, I guess. Also, before we end the video, I just wanted to say this, uh, tell you this quote from AS from Christian Teo, saying, It would be great if my goal against Real Madrid would give Barcelona the title. I spent many years there, and I am in love with Barcelona and its fans. Shout out my guy, Christian Teo. Won us the, the league. Let's go. Obviously, he's a great player with us. Obviously, we had Neymar coming in. He didn't get that much playing time, so he decided to leave. Man's, uh... Not even in a Barca shirt and still winning us Champions Leagues. So, not, not Champions Leagues, sorry, Leagues. I don't know why I said Champions League. Was he in the Champions League squad in 2011? No, he wasn't. I'm kind of rambling off now. But yeah, so, I'll see you guys in the outro. <laughs> so, that's my reaction to Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you like, comment, hit that subscribe button, and I'll be back later. Like tomorrow, I guess, for another my reaction to the next 24 hours. So, yeah, I'll see you guys then. Take care. <laughs>